A very good evening to all of you and uh, welcome to this week's first edition of the Evening Review. My name is Tewan Jabala, your host. Let's have a look at today's front page of Namibian Sun. Tonight in the studio, I am joined by a man who does not really, really like to be in the media. But for some reason today, I managed to convince him to come to the studio. And uh, his name is Desmond Amnella. He's a local entrepreneur, business owner, and employer of so many people. Uh, welcome to the show, uh, Des. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was not wrong to say that you are, you are never in the spotlight. Eh? No, you, no. You, you don't appear in the papers. What's wrong? What, what, what's, what, what's the issue? Because, um, for someone who is doing a great job. There's, there's no need for me to be <laughs> in the papers. <laughs> yeah, so uh, obviously then I'm not doing a good enough job to, yeah. to get the attention of, of your kind. So <laughs> that's <laughs> probably why, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I'm good without being in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. No, you, you've been in uh, only by force when we hear people not having very kind things to say, you know, about your, your businesses, about your whatever, but uh, at least for today that is not the purpose. Uh, tell me how business is doing uh, in this climate, uh, uh, economic climate. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Like, uh, this is probably the common story with every, every other businessman you come across. Yeah. Uh, but under the circumstances, we are doing the best we can to to you know pull through mm. we are mm. we come from the uh from the streets yeah that's that's where we are molded so yeah, yeah. Uh, it that experience comes in handy now it, yeah yeah, it, yeah we, Indeed. we are trying to turn every um challenge into an opportunity mm -hmm. so yeah but it's tough it's not like it was before i can imagine yeah. just for my viewers i need to remind you that uh desmond Daniela is a uh, uh, co-founder of Paragon Investment is a holding company with so many other portfolios in the fishing uh, property and other activities. You spoke about how the streets have helped you become the men that you are and, and you've seen some of those lessons from the streets to help keep your head afloat. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about your, your past maybe in that context. It's my past is a, it's a very colorful past. <laughs> so when you say, tell us a little bit, <laughs> you have to be so more specific. So, so that others can also learn what is it that you can learn from the street. When you, when you say my past, you mean in business or in general? Yeah, no, I mean to say, you know, maybe your humble beginnings. How you, how you raised to the pinnacles where you are today. In terms of business? Yes. Jeez, it's a long story, man. We need more than uh, the time <laughs> you allocated to me. Yeah. Um, I, my past was not much different than the average guy from Mondesa or yeah. Katutura. Mm -hmm. um, uh, perhaps the only difference is that I, I, I was fortunate enough to, to be raised by an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, the, the gentleman who raised me, an uncle, mm -hmm. was like a father. He... Um, he was a businessman. Mm. Yeah, he was one of those few that was licensed in Mondesa back then to, yeah. to, to conduct business. So business has been a part of me all my life. I, I, mm. don't, know, I don't know how not to be yeah. business-like or, or taking something for a dollar, you yeah. know, spin it around for, for five. Yes. I just, that is just how I know. So it may be a bit difficult for for me to make the guy who does not understand that to understand what it means to grow up in a business environment because I don't know any other life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Indeed. Um, now, now the, the business climate is, is, like you said, is very, very difficult, probably at, it, at, at its historic difficult. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we, you know, because of the environment uh, globally and locally, but 
in your in your in your case, yeah. Um, you know, there are people who would say, you know, I mean, I, I, a couple of weeks ago we wrote uh, what was it that we wrote in the paper, and someone sort of confronted me over it. Um, we called someone a swapper businessman. Yeah, I can't remember who it was. And uh, someone said, "Oh, yeah, um, uh, yeah." We called John Walenga a swapper businessman. <laughs> Great friend of mine. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and and when someone texted me the next morning and was confronting me about oh, what makes a uh, person a swapper businessman, then I said, "Look, these are, be are people who are very close to power." Um, whether by default or design doesn't really matter, but whose businesses may be perceived to have also thrived on the basis of uh, that proximity to power. Uh, in your case, you are, you are not in any formal party structures of Swapo, but I know that you are a proper Swapo man. No, I, I, <laughs> let me correct you. There. I am. I, I, yes. I'm the treasurer of uh, Windhoek East District. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, so elected. Elected, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Does that has has your proximity to power? I know you are very close. To, you are very close to to, to President Hagegenga, for example. Has it helped your business in some ways to to thrive? No. No, it doesn't. It doesn't because if you look at my business to start with, yeah, I'm probably one of those few Namibian business people I know mm. whose business does not depend directly. On government mm. and I'll try and explain that mm. uh, there's a buzzword these days uh, they, we call each other or we call others tenderpreneurs and and there's a negative connotation to it mm. almost implying that you don't deserve what you have yeah. or you didn't end what you have so be that as it may uh, the difference here is that my business model anything or everything I have that connects to government is the sort of thing that government would say, man, Namibia, I have this open space here. Yeah. There gotta be something somebody mm. can do to mm. make us money. Mm. Give me a business plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then I will apply my knowledge and give you a business case mm. from which you make money. Mm -hmm. I don't remember chasing an opportunity, you know, the request for they call they call them tenders but actually request for a price yes and you know you know all these other things that comes with it inflating prices and all of this because the guys involved are all the same and and and, and you know there's something to share at the end of it mm -hmm. so that's the difference mm -hmm. so i i don't then understand how uh, knowing that how being close to anybody in power yeah would advance my business mm, mm, mm. and you must always understand this no leader or a person up there mm. wakes up one day and goes through the national registry mm. and says ah i'm looking for somebody to bring close to me mm. no mm, mm. it's always about you mm. what is it that you mean to these people mm. in most cases they get from our kind mm -hmm. more than they give us mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't see that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because other, because these people have got their children they have families they, mm. why would they want to come after you why are you so special so it's it's often um because because common interest yeah <laughs> you must have something that they want yeah and they must have something that they can offer mm -hmm. and and it, it all material times as a business person, you need to know why you have that closeness. Sometimes it can really just be about humanity, friendship. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they are human beings, they can have friends. Exactly. Sometimes it can be to create a critical mass mm. that is required to move something forward, mm. something which is of common good to either, like in this case, you say swap or business, this, that, mm. maybe for the party that you both belong to. Yeah. Because we all can't be in the same position. We all can't be the important politicians or businessmen. Mm, mm. And there should be nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, when you, and, and we'll move to the other topics, I just want to put closure to this particular one. That <coughs> when you fly 
a presidential candidate, a country's presidential candidate to yeah. a world football match uh, final in Brazil for an incoming president, th there will be, is it fair that some people would then want to know what is in, for, what is in it for you, for example? Z, you are now <laughs> leading me into... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I don't want to dwell much into that. I yeah. mean, that's an old story. And yeah. it's, it, it has gotten its fair share of uh, media coverage. But mm. you must understand one thing. Yeah. Uh, the uncle is an uncle. Yes. He's not even a politician or a president or incoming president, the way you see it. Yeah. He just happened to be that. Mm. Now, when you ask that question, you must just step back a little bit to see how far we come mm. before he was any of these things uh, that you just described because often people for convenience sake they isolate that part yeah. the fact that he was coming into office mm. but uh, it's not just like I met him the day uh, he was announced to be coming into the office and then I said let's fly let's up. fly no mm. it's it's it, we would have flown whether he he had become that person you described or not. Mm. And you would probably not even have asked me this question today because it wouldn't have mattered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that background is what, uh, uh, what is missing from this whole story. But you must also understand that uh, we are responsible people, mm. uh, all of us. Mm. And um, it, it sometimes I think it, it must say something about the person mm. who think ill of others intention yeah. because when you ask a question there's a thought behind that question what makes you ask that question yeah. and only you can answer that mm -hmm. and often it starts with how you would have reacted to a situation like that yes before you ask that question mm. because you have not seen any uh, you know um, uh, something of uh, a criminal nature being done for you to suspect that oh no these people are criminals oh no we have evidence that mm. they do this it's just wild imaginations but they are informed by something yes within the person asking or making that allegation fair enough oh yeah i needed to ask that question because um, we needed that context that you provided because you don't appear in the media no but and so when you come here today and we know we'll not see you again in a year's time so we needed to clarify yeah, but that's all this. we're here for, <laughs> for, for business yeah yeah no 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 i think, no, I think it's, a fair, it's a fair it's a fair it's a fair response now politics as you understand it i mean you are involved you are holding that uh, treasurer's position for commerce um is politics a catalyst for business growth what, what is it how, how does politics or how should politics be like in order for it to advance the general good of business? Yeah, look, <laughs> politics, unless you ask the question, politics in the context of leadership, because mm -hmm. leaders are produced by a political system. Yes. Um, and how that relates to the environment of business. Yes. Uh, yeah look if you ask me this is what i'm going to say it must start with a leader mm. understanding the responsibility of leadership yeah do, do, do you get that yes you must know why you are a leader and the responsibility mm. of being a leader mm. because if you don't understand that forget everything else mm. Mm. now you we i think we are we are we are old enough to to know what is good and what is bad in terms of leadership yes uh, we've been fortunate to to have seen leaders come and go in the region and across the world mm -hmm. and a leader must love him him or herself mm. because if you don't it will be hard to you know love somebody else who looks like you because yeah. they will be reminding you, you of, them of, of you. The, the, them of you yeah you, you get yes uh and if and that's a problem because if you don't love yourself enough you can't love any other thing that looks like you yeah, yeah. so that if you love yourself it will pain you to see somebody something that looks like you mm. living in a squalor conditions like we have them mm. in the in the extended mondesas and, and katutura mm, mm. okay because our constitution to start with guarantees 
as a dignified life. Yes. And we shall do everything, all and sundry, to see to it that every one of us have a dignified life. Okay? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now, that, for me, that is my leader. Mm -hmm. And from there, because of those things, you will then be in a position to do everything that needs to be done mm -hmm. to facilitate for everybody that lives in your uh, whatever country or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm to enjoy those things that are guaranteed by, amongst other, our, our, our supreme law. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have that, then you will begin to have leaders misinterpreting the, 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 the rule, or I mean, the, the, um, not the rule, but the, the, the responsibility of leadership. Mm -hmm. That now they become greater than any other. Mm -hmm. That, that uh, you should be grateful that you have a leader mm -hmm. like me. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the other way around. Mm. Because we, we surrender our, our sovereignty yeah. to this thing called leadership for, for the sake of order. Because mm. all of us can now go be leaders, yeah. whether it's leadership in business or in government or in the uh, church. We all can be there. So mm. there must be this somebody who embraces and who is responsible enough mm. and understand comprehensively the needs of all mm. and try their level best yeah. to see to it that we get enough of what we deserve. Indeed. You, 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 you are a, you, I, I, in your career as a businessman, um, even currently in this difficult economic climate, you are providing a livelihood to so many people yeah. through employment. Sure. Um, and you need to be in a particular kind of political environment for that purpose to thrive. Yeah. In other words, um, what is it, what kind of political environment do you need as, a, in, as an entrepreneur to actually thrive and uh, be able to help those that work for you? Sure. Look, the, the, first of all, we need to believe in ourselves. Yeah. We need to believe in ourselves. And as we believe in ourselves, we need to always be honest enough to give the, uh, the chances, yeah. especially leadership chances or, or, or positions that makes a difference in other people's lives yeah. to our best. In other words, we must always compete with our best. Mm. So our best means even if you don't like the person, even if that person does not belong to your political uh, organization or orientation, for as long as they are Namibian and they have something better to offer, mm. let's find a way to utilize those skills mm. so that we can compete with our best. Because remember, mm. we are not an island to ourselves. Yeah. In as much as we talk SADC and integration and this and that, we compete squarely and fairly with all the others. Mm. What Namibia has in resources, you find it almost par excellence in Botswana. Mm. Zambia. Here and there, there may be a difference that they have more copper than we do, but we compete. Yeah. So how then do you compete with others if you don't compete with your best? Mm -hmm. So we need to eliminate this thing of, uh, I think the English people call it patronage. Yeah. You are from my village. Yes. You are my friend. You are my political ally. Mm. That one, this, that one, this. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, really, it's, it's like cutting the branch of a tree you're on top of. Yeah, if yeah. you leave me out, then you know I have better than what you prefer. Mm. So competing with, uh, with our best is important. Um, so to answer your question, the political environment must be the one that seeks to achieve the best mm. for everybody. Mm -hmm. We can still have our differences, but at least we have our differences sailing on yachts or flying in private jets, and having enough for what we deserve mm. and not that we have this katutura and we have us here and then we think yeah no that that's not my desirable political environment mm -hmm. it, it's sad if 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 we don't hurry up and do something to change that because mm. it's a matter of time before um before these things explode mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah indeed um are you a product of black economic empowerment i don't know eh?
<laughs> well, black economic empowerment is, I think it's a policy, no? It's, it's not yes. a law. Uh, yes. It's a policy in yeah. Namibia, mm. or was, uh, I don't even know. But ov obviously, um, there, there has been benefits that has accrued from that pronouncement. Yeah. Um, it may have been good, or it, might, it may be good for some, but not for all. But for example, me, I wouldn't, I, I don't think it's of much effect, mm. consequence to what I do, mm. because of the self-belief in my abilities mm. in this thing called business. Mm. There are greater challenges, systematic challenges, mm. that we need to address if we really want to make a difference, mm. even with that black empowerment thing, because it's almost like, a, um, what's the word? A lip service. Mm. Because it only allows you to run from a certain point to a certain point. Mm. Beyond that, so it's, a, it's a different animal. Yeah. Uh, this is th there are different systems and mm. interest groups that, yeah. that, that keeps us where we are. And, and we, you will see, um, and I saw this in, in, my, in my growth in, in terms of business, mm. you would start at a point. And um, as you start, you will have a lot of your kind embracing you, uh, giving you credit and helping you up mm. until you reach a certain level. And then you begin to encroach into uh, their space because they can't go any further above mm. them there's a ceiling mm. which we as i would call the black system mm. has not managed to you know to 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 penetrate through mm. and those are the issues i think namibia if we want to really transform we mm -hmm. need to start um you know uh, the debate about that mm. and see how we can overcome mm -hmm. because the greatest i think talent or, or, or opportunity lies above that mm, mm, mm. for for us in the context of black empowerment yeah yeah, yeah. Do, do we still need uh, then uh, 31 years after independence because people of course you know there's a justification that because blacks were in this bondage of poverty and exclusion that BEE was necessary as, as an intervention at the time um, and then now th there's this movement that says um, why don't we now look at the presently disadvantaged instead of the previously disadvantaged because the likes of uh, uh, Desmond Amiela have now, you know, grown out of that space. They are successful now because, of course, um, they come from that previously disadvantaged as a, as, a, as a general concept. But now to be specific, uh, instead of being general, why don't we look at people that are now presently disadvantaged and help them going forward? Is, is BE still necessary? Yes, it is necessary because there's so many of us that needs to be transformed mm. economically. Mm. Now, you are speaking to me today. I have been somehow transformed economically. Mm. I, can, I can compete um, and I've proven it to myself, my business now operates in uh, Zambia, Tanzania, Tanzania um, Zimbabwe, mm. without help from the system. Mm. The only help I got from the system is the empowerment to be able to be resourced enough mm. to go and compete there. Mm. And I'm, I'm succeeding. Mm. Uh, uh, so as I step away from where I was yesterday, yeah the next Desmond must be assisted to get there. Mm. Now, remember B in my, in my understanding or the way I have seen it in, 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 in practice. Yeah. It's not much more than the ability to access public procurement. Mm. You know, how much, that, how much does that represent in terms of our eco uh, uh, um, economy? Mm -hmm. What impact does it do, the annual allocation that you allocate to uh, government procurement of goods and services or uh, capital projects? Mm -hmm. I, 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 it's, it's a small percentage yeah. from the size of the economy. Mm -hmm. Now, if we, we don't once again develop a strategy to be able to graduate uh, many of us mm -hmm. so that we can create space for those that qualifies for B to come through yeah. and follow us. We 
Once we reach the selling, we'll come back there. Mm. And then I'll start to compete on, on um, what is it, security tenders and cleaning mm -hmm. government buildings. And I'm much more resourced than a guy who's starting yesterday. Yes. And that's why you see this thing of name calling and self-hate. Mm. It's because we have turned this thing into almost like a black on black violence. Mm. You understand? Because mm. there hasn't been sufficient effort to grow yeah. the capacity of the state in terms of what is it that the state can put back into its people. Mm. And, and the state needs to do that. Why? It's important to have rich or wealthy people. Because you can tax them. Yes. But it is a, it's a nightmare to just have a sea of poor people. Mm -hmm. You just have to give. And that can stretch to political stability or instability, depending on how, how well taken care of your society is. Mm -hmm. So the point is, the animal in the room, I mean the, the uh, elephant. the elephant in the room, mm -hmm is the economic system that, that we have mm. whether adopted. I think it's not even adopted was somehow forced upon us when, mm. when, when the, 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 the colleagues, the f liberators mm. negotiated with the Brendan Woods institution mm. right at the beginning and, and amongst others. Mm. Um, we cannot toys, go to the corner of Robert of Independence Avenue and Jose Agutaku every morning. Yeah? Mm. Six, seven, you will see how we migrate to this side of town yeah. to come and give cheap labor. Mm. Because the economic system is such that it was designed to demand of us uh, low skill, mm. therefore low wages. Mm. Okay? But I, like I said, I operate in places like um, um, Tanzania where you have much bigger economies and uh, they call them. Um, uh, African economies, but they mean a lot for, 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 for their people. Mm. Because people go where the money is, not the other way around. Yes. But in Namibia, we continue with that system. That system was designed back then. Mm. It remains the same. So, with all these black empowerment things you're talking about, for as long as we do not disrupt that system, yeah. so it begins to benefit us. I often have this argument with or debate with uh, um, many of you uh, colleagues that Zimbabwe is soon to be a successful nation for its people mm. because they found a way to disrupt the economy for the benefit of, uh, of its people. Mm. Now, yes, there they they are major disruptions there and a lot of people would say this guy is crazy, but yeah. you go there today, the balance sheet of the black, the indigenous Zimbabweans mm. is much stronger than it was when it was economically orderly. Mm. Here, all we have is the ability to be able to access credit. And that credit allows you to keep your, your head just above the water. You, you, so you continue to feed. Mm. Look at how much capital flies out of, out of uh, Namibia on a daily basis. Mm. Look at these things called banks, yeah. insurance companies. Mm. How much money, how much profits are they shipping out? Yeah. Why can't we pass a law that says all banks yeah. must be Namibian? Exactly. And even if it has a foreign player, yeah. there must be an element to say, okay, before this COVID thing actually taught me something. Briefly, yes. Yeah, briefly. Remember when they said, um, you must justify your movements. It, your movements must be connected to something essential. Mm. Let it be essential for the money to fly out of Namibia, whether it's through the uh, profit of, uh, of, of, of insurance companies or, or banks. Mm -hmm. Because a bank does not come to Namibia, a foreign bank doesn't, does not come to Namibia to bring truck load of cash yeah. to start a bank. It's you and I's money. Yes, I hear you. But let me go to the bank now today with whatever idea I may have mm. to develop Namibia. They will ask me questions from here to the north and back. Yeah. Yeah, I will have to secure them threefold. Yeah. And, then there's, and I think there may even be, 
if you look at it, it may not be a deliberate discrimination, but if you look at the numbers, yes. those that are previously disadvantaged, if you go to the banks and you look at their credit policies, they yeah. will say, okay, you can borrow Mr. Toivo and Jebela Prime Plus Two. Yeah. Mr. Van der Somebody, oh, okay, we know your the history of your family, <laughs> Prime Minus. <laughs> now they are in minority. <laughs> yeah, I think you've made your point. I think I've made your point. Yeah, I'm in, a bit in, the, in, the, in, in the interest of time. Yeah, yeah no, no, this, you must come back. You must yeah. definitely come back because we haven't exhausted this subject very well and it was just getting juicier. Yeah. But in the interest of time, I have to stop you here. Sure. But thanks for coming. Sure. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's uh, Despond Amyela. He's uh, an entrepreneur, a very successful entrepreneur, and uh, he's just sharing bits and pieces of uh, his journey. Thank you for watching.